Hello, this is Ricky from Data Mastery. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to build a RAG workflow using Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Bases. So let's get started and log into AWS account and then go to Amazon Bedrock service. In Amazon Bedrock, there are multiple features or subservices are there. We need to select Knowledge Bases, so click on Knowledge Bases. So what is a knowledge base? It is a service or a feature of a Bedrock service which allows you to create a rag based workflow. So it's a fully managed service. You don't have to manage anything. And it comes with three different types of uh, variants, I would say. So you can create three different types of knowledge bases. One with the simple vector store, which is to uh, which is the most flexible one and you have the option to select multiple different types of vector store databases like open search and others and there's also an option to connect with different types of data sources and then we have the second type of knowledge bases with the structured data store this option can be used to connect your knowledge base with a structured data and which is mostly stored in the redshift cluster so that's the only data source that this particular option supports right now. And the third option is to create a knowledge base with Kendra. Kendra is another service. It's a fully managed service which is used for enterprise search solutions. Like you can connect your data sources with Kendra and then Kendra will do the search uh, uh, in the documents stored inside your data store. So in this video, we are going to do a hands-on using the first option, which is knowledge base with vector store. So you have to click on create and select the first option, knowledge base with vector store. And here you have to specify the name of your knowledge base. For the IAM permissions, you can create a new service role or use an existing one. So I'm gonna create a new service role. And here you have the option to choose from different data sources. So you can choose from S3, which is the um, you know highly used one. And then you can also use the web crawler in case you want to crawl the web pages. There is a custom data source as well. And then you have the third party data sources like Confluence, Salesforce, and SharePoint. Most of these data sources are in preview, but the mostly used one is Amazon S3. So we are going to use Amazon S3 here. You can create your tags, whatever the tags that's being used in your organization. You can apply those tags here as well. And then you can configure the logs to multiple destinations. So the logs can be configured to CloudWatch, to S3, and to Data Firehose. And from Data Firehose, you can also uh, send the log to or stream the logs to the third party services like uh, Splunk. Uh, then click on Next. And here you have to specify uh, the data source, whether the data source is in this account or in some other account. So the cross account integration is also provided out of the box. And then you can specify the S3 location. So where is your data? You need to put the data in S3 if you're selecting S3 as a data source. And then you can just browse S3 and for example, if I click on this one, so I have customer orders data and I'm just gonna choose this file. And then you have the parsing strategy. Uh, there are different types of, two different types of parsing strategy. One is to process only the text from your data. And the second parsing strategy is to uh, process even the images or the visually rich documents, uh, which basically contains images or graphics. So based on your document, you can select whatever parsing strategy is uh, um, apt for you. So I'm just gonna stick with the default one. And the next is the chunking strategy. So what is chunking? It's basically to break down text into smaller segments before embeddings are gonna be created. So we have the default chunking, which is, uh, it's like splitting the text into chunks of about 300 tokens in size. This is the default one. You can also do the fixed size chunking, like split your text into approximate token size or hierarchical chunking, semantic chunking, or no chunking at all. So I'm gonna stick with the uh, default chunking. There are other optional uh, options here. The first one is the 
transformation function. So you can create a Lambda function to customize the chunking and the metadata processing. And the other advanced setting is uh, the KMS key. If you want to specify your own, uh, you know, the customer managed key, you can provide that. And the data retention policy or the data deletion policy is basically to delete. Uh, whenever you delete the data source, do you want to keep the data or you want to delete the data? So this is the data deletion policy. The default one is that uh, the vector data will be deleted when the data source is deleted. And next we have uh, embeddings models. For this, you can select embedding model, like we have uh, Titan embeddings V2, Titan embeddings G1. This is provided by Amazon. Then we have a couple of models from Cohere. So you can select your Titan text embeddings. And for the vector database, so where these embeddings are gonna be stored, this is where you get uh, another uh, multiple options. So you can create open source serverless uh, as your vector database. You can also have Postgres serverless, and you can also have Neptune Analytics. So if you already have a vector store creator, this provides you the option to connect with other uh, you know, the vector store databases like Pinecode, Aurora, uh, Redis, MongoDB. So all these uh, different vector store databases are supported. And here, if you want to, let's say, specify the replicas for your vector database, you can specify that as well. And also the encryption settings for your uh, database. And finally, you can review the settings, whatever you have configured so far. So you can review it. If you want to make any change, you can change it. And if everything looks good, you can just go ahead and create the knowledge base. Now it's gonna take few minutes, like around 10, 10 minutes or so to create the knowledge base. And then once the knowledge base is gonna be created, then you have to sync your data source. So that's again gonna take few minutes depending on the size of your data. So I'm just going to cancel it since I already have one knowledge base created with similar settings. So I'm just gonna open that. And here you can see that I have one S3 data source which is connected with this knowledge base. Now after you create the knowledge base, the first thing that you need to do is to select your data source and click on sync. Whatever data that you have in your S3 bucket, that data will be synced. And you know the chunking and the embeddings are gonna be created for that data and that will be stored in your open search cluster. So the data I have in this is the customer orders dummy data that as you can see on your screen. So I have some order IDs, customer IDs, customer name, order date, location, status, product, quantity, price, and the customer email. So this is the data that I just uh, you know uh, uploaded to S3 and then just integrate it with the knowledge base. Now, once your knowledge base uh, data source a sync is completed, you can just click on this, and you can see that the sync has been completed today, and there is one source file, so that's uh, successfully done. Now, once the sync is done, the next thing that you can do is to test your uh, workflow. So what you can do, you can test the knowledge base, so we have this uh, test functionality you know, available in the console itself. So you can select the model that you want to use with this uh, rag. And I'm gonna select the Nova Lite one and click on apply. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ask the question based on the data that I have in the S3 bucket. So let's say if I ask what is the status of order number this is the order id so if you want to check the status of this order and you can just ask the question and the status of order number this is pending so this is coming from your uh, file that you have uploaded to s3 so this is working on your private data and you can further ask uh, you know uh, okay the next question is uh, what is the shipping address of order 003? 
So this is going to tell you the shipping address is New York. So this shows you how you can seamlessly build a RAG workflow using knowledge bases. Now the testing and everything that I have configured so far, this is also possible to configure uh, using CLI or using um, you know the Bodo3 library and then using the, the, the Bedrock client with that. And this is something that you can use with the SDK as well in your application. So once you have this knowledge base uh, workflow set up, you can start asking questions and uh, start getting the response out of your data. Now, one thing that you probably try to note here that it is not going to answer you anything uh, about the topics which are not part of your data source. So if I ask, uh, what is a VPC? It is not going to answer that because it, it does not know that. So there is a there is a no uh, information about the VPC or anything else. So it is only going to answer based on whatever information or the data that you have uploaded to S3. Now this is one uh, simple example, but it shows you this is a fully managed workflow that you can build uh, just with few clicks. And if you have your data in SharePoint or if you have data in Salesforce, you can seamlessly integrate that with knowledge base and start asking questions on your data. So this is going to be a, you know, a fully serverless, fully managed uh, solution for you. And you can, you can start using this right away. So I hope this video is helpful. And uh, if you have any question on this, you can just drop your questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer those. But for now, I just wanted to uh, go over knowledge bases and uh, explain you how to build a fully managed RAG workflow using knowledge bases. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.